Alternative Radio. On this episode, Missy and I are talking about comparing. Ladies and gentlemen, please take your seats. The show is about to begin. Everyone, to another episode of On Finding Peace, and this is a podcast where Missy and I talk about daily simple life tasks that you can do to help you find your inner peace and happiness. And on today's episode, uh, being that we are recording uh, the day after Valentine's Day here in uh, 2021. Uh, so we thought we would talk about comparing and how that relates to inner peace. And uh, if you're wondering how Valentine's Day relates into that, you'll find out shortly. <laughs> but uh, so, Missy, how are you doing? I'm doing good. Um, I, we, we went away this weekend. We had a really nice Valentine's Day. It was uh, kind of cold and rainy where we were, but we, we just had an absolute blast spending time with each other, connecting and um so it was it was a nice little getaway. How about yourself? Doing well. Didn't go anywhere because of the weather. We uh, had about four inches of snow, and then the next day we had an ice storm oh, uh, that put I don't know like point two inches of ice on everything. Wow! Um, and then a day later it melted. So you know, uh, unfortunately, that's where I live that, you know, you only get a couple inches of snow and by the next day it's all gone. Yeah. Um, you know, I'm used to living and growing up in an area where once the snow fell for the first time for the winter, it didn't melt again until spring came and, you know, it took most of spring to get rid of most of the snow. (laughs) It it just piled up and piled up. And see, I grew up where you're at now, so that I always knew, like, there was no making snowmen for, for very long, or if it did, it, it barely lasted, you know. But, there was no reason for me to shovel. I'm watching my neighbors shovel, and I'm thinking, <laughs> why are you shoveling? It's going to melt by tomorrow, and, you know, with this whole quarantine stuff, it's not like I'm going anywhere, so yeah, yeah, just yeah. left it alone. Yeah, that's funny. Well, you mean he, he even even in this conversation about the weather, it's funny because comparison is there, right? You know, and um, it, it kind of has come into my experience where, um, you know, not that I personally was comparing, but I witnessed other women comparing um, things of, you know, like what, whoever got what for Valentine's Day, where they went, what they got, did they get flowers, did they get jewelry, you know, did they go out to dinner? Um, and so I just thought it was a really important because I feel like comparison kind of steals your happiness, mm-hmm. you know, and, and takes away from the peace that, that we we experienced from, from good experiences. Like, I mean, I, I had an amazing weekend, you know, I laughed with my best friend. I held hands. We walked me, we did, we did all kinds of amazing things, just spending time together. And, um, and it, it very easily, you can get trapped in the Facebook social media scroll of like, well, that person got flowers. Well, that person got, you know, a brand new pair of shoes or, you know, uh, jewelry, or they got engaged or, you know, those kind of things can really take away from what I got to experience. And, um, and I actually saw a few people posting about the comparison that they were experiencing. And I was like, wow, what a peace stealer, you know? So I thought that, you know, it, it could, um, could also be happening in other people's experiencing if if I'm I'm seeing it and uh, and I was just wondering like for men how does that how does that come about for you guys like do you guys have a lot of struggle in comparison? No, <laughs> um, we don't. Uh, typically, no, I'm not going to speak for all men, and you know. There, there are differences. So, um, but generally speaking, and I know for myself, I, I, I don't compare, you know, I, I don't look at, you know, what did I get versus what did you get? 
Um, I may be a bit comparing and competitive when it does come to things like snow. You know, I, I always want to have the most snow that anybody near me had. And, uh, you know, I'll, I'll comment that way. But, you know, really when we're talking about comparing it, as you say, you know, if, if I want to try to one up you uh, in, in comparison, it's definitely taking away your satisfaction. But I also think it takes away the person who's making that comparison, it takes away their inner peace. Oh, yeah, so, for sure. So, you know, let, let's say, and this is the, the wrong word to use, but but let's use the word win. You know, so let's say I make this comparison you know, that I won, you know, I, I got the bigger, better, whatever. Um, but by having to say that and knock you down doesn't help my inner peace. It might help my ego. I might get an attitude about oh, it. Yeah. But if you really think about it, what is that doing to my inner peace that I had to knock somebody else down to prove a point? No, and, and I agree with that. I, and I think sometimes, like, let's just say, okay, hypothetically, like, um, uh, you know, we're both coaches, right? So very easily I could compare myself to what you what you do for coaching, mm -hmm. right? And And you're not bragging. You're not like, oh, I have all these clients and, you know, you don't do things like that. But in seeing and, and being able to just witness you living your life, I could easily, and I say I as in this, I've done this in the past, I'm sure other people do it, fall into comparison of, well, well, I must not be good enough for people. Maybe people just don't like what I have to say or, or you know, people don't like me in general. So that could be a comparison that I make that is, you know, it's healthy on your behalf because you're just living your life, right? But it's mm -hmm. unhealthy on my behalf where it would steal my peace because I'm looking at other people um, basically in lack of myself, like feeling um, like I don't have what somebody else has. Right. Without knowing the reasons. Right. So, you know, in, in what you were just saying, and, and I'll fall into this trap every once in a while, you know, I mean, nobody's perfect, but, you know, I, I'll pull up other coaches, uh, you know, social media and, um, you know, notice, well, how come they have thousands, you know, of likes and I, and I have hundreds, you know, why, why do they have this? And I only have for, you know, some reason to what you're saying, you know, well, then I'm not that good. My message isn't good. My blah, blah, blah. Without coming to that understanding of how did they get those, you know, are they truly better at what they do? Did they pay for some of those? You know, that, that's a thing that you can do. Um, right. Do I maybe in my hundreds have the max as far as the people who I reach with my message? Mm -hmm. You know, when you look at it that way, then I might be doing better than somebody who has thousands but not even touching the tip of the amount of people who follow them who just say, oh, I didn't like that post. So I'm not going to like it. Um, you know, so I don't know how many people are, are reading their posts and like, I'm not going to click on that um, versus is the majority of the people who read mine clicking on them. You know, you just don't know that. So what I'm saying is, you know, in, in making comparisons, there, there's so many variables that we oh, yeah. don't know um, that making that comparison really doesn't do anything no it just it it, it makes no sense because really like we, we're not on their path we don't know what their path is and what they're here to teach or heal or learn you know and um and i find that if it triggers you then it is something that needs to be healed in you right so uh comparison you know of i mean it could be anything it doesn't have to be business mm -hmm. things it could be money it no. could be you know somebody else's body type what they look like you know how they wear their hair i mean it, it could be a, a number of things um but it's really all it boils down to is like you're standing on the wrong side of the pole, right? That's the law of polarity where you're standing with ego and siding with looking good, being right, staying safe and stay and, and uh, what's the other one? Sorry, being right, staying comfortable, uh, being in control. Sorry, that's the last one. And, and, <laughs> and that's like, we listen to that voice thinking that that's really who we are rather than waiting to hear the inner thoughts that are true, you know, and that we know, like, I have my own path, you have your own path, you're here mm -hmm. to teach certain, certain people, they're going to be drawn to you. I'm here to teach certain people, they're here to be drawn to me. And maybe it's not my time. 
you understand that all happens in the right timing, right? So your time, like my, might have happened years ago, where you you just blew up in a sense, and and everybody started like, oh God, Chris is amazing, he's wonderful, which you are, and so am I in a different way, right? And mm-hmm. so so sometimes it's like taking that step back and and going, okay, wait, we're gonna put the mute button on the ego. And like, what is this really trying to teach me if I'm if I'm thinking those things that I'm not standing on the right side of the pole, I'm not standing on, sorry, it's actually the left side of the pole, but it's it's the the spirit space, right? The yeah. the, the oneness. Um, and when we're you have to understand that I feel that if you can tap into it because I am part of that one mind, then I can tap into it. And knowing that makes me feel so much more at peace. Mm-hmm. Exactly. Because the other thing we're doing when we're making a comparison is we're making an assumption. And mm-hmm. I think we all know what it means when we assume, you yes. know, what you make out of you and me. <laughs> um, so that becomes the problem because we can look at somebody and say, from a business sense, look at all the likes that they have, or we can look at somebody mm-hmm. just from a personal sense, you know, they have a, a bigger house, a better this, their family is better. Yeah. You know, they got it all put together, blah, 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 you know, and look at what we've got. But in these assumptions, we are assuming that they're at peace and happy. Yeah. So we're assuming that if they're getting all these likes, they must be content with themselves and, ooh, look at all the people who like me. You know, yeah. we're, we're assuming that what we see on the outside of somebody's family life and say, hey, they've got it all put together, their family might be falling apart. Yeah. But we're assuming based off of what we see, where in reality, you might even be happier than they are. But the problem by comparing is you miss the moment. You know, isn't it all about living in the moment? Yeah. So you, oh, yeah, you miss your yes. own moment of happiness by saying, yeah. look at them, but you don't even know if they're happy. Well, you know, it's funny because I have a lot of people go, oh my God, you have it all together. And I'm like, <laughs> I, I love that you said that, but thank you for that perception because I appreciate it. And at the same time, like, you don't see me juggling. You don't see me breaking down in tears and some days. You don't see me, you know, trying to keep it all together. And I don't keep it all together because of fear of what everybody else thinks on the outside. It, it's actually more for me because I know that if I drop it, I might lose it. Or if I do drop it, I don't care what other people think. You know, it's and, and that's what's good is because that's when I really started to tap into being me. Like if I want to cry because I had a bad moment or something triggered me, then I'm just going to let it out. And, and in doing that, like I realized how beautiful vulnerability is because I always mm. thought it was a, a sign of weakness and, not at all. and I'm not a runner, right? Like I used to run. I'd be like, <laughs> Oh my God, I don't want anybody to see me. I'm so embarrassed. Now I'm like, I don't care. I'm just going to let it out. And, 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 and I find that people are drawn more to me being the real me rather than me hiding the me that I think they want me to be. And, and that's right. another part of comparison really, because I'm comparing what I think they want to what I really am or who I really right. am. And um, so, so those are the kind of things that it's like, once you tap into just being who you are beautifully and wonderfully created, then like everything starts to fall into place so much easier rather than looking at somebody else for who they're created to be. Right. Because we're not supposed to be them. No. You know, it's well, one of the things, um, that, that I always go back to, and, and I'm not going to go into the full philosophical background of it. Um, I do love philosophy and have studied it, but when you look at the philosophy of perfection mm. and what is perfection, um, it boils down to, and I'm going to way oversimplify it just for the point of saying that you are doing you. Yeah. For instance, you know, if, if you were to look at a tree, we could say that that tree is perfect, even if it's got weird branches or, or whatever, <laughs> that the tree is perfect because the tree is a tree. Yeah. The tree is meant to be tree. a tree. Yeah. <laughs> right. You know, it, it's meant to be a tree. It's being a tree. It's not trying to be anything but a tree. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so it's perfect in its yeah. treeness. It's yeah. just content being a tree. So that kind of translates to us. What do we do in perfection? And our perfection comes into 
we need to be who we are without trying to be what we're not. Man, that's so beautiful. That was gorgeous. That was eloquently put. I love it. You can thank Aristotle. But yeah. <laughs> thanks, Aristotle. <laughs> yeah, that, that one my that, that's not my <laughs> original thought. Um but but no, I, I, I do like that and, and it, it is really beautiful in, in its simplicity is the way that I look yeah. at that because yeah. in what you're saying, if I'm not comparing myself to somebody else, meaning I'm not trying to be somebody else, I'm just trying to be me. If we live in the present moment, the me who I am at this moment is as perfect as it's going to be right this moment. Yeah. Now, you could look at that and go like, well, that's, you know, kind of sad because there's so much more I could do. Correct. And that's for the next moment. You right. know, what do I do next to become better? So in the next moment, I can say I'm the perfect version of me at this moment. Yeah. And, and we absolutely. keep moving forward and growing. Well, you know, and, and it's always, that's it. It's always the next logical step. Like, right. You know, like, like you said, it's just, it's always divine timing. It's always perfectly timed. And, and, you know, recognizing that if in this moment, then it causes me to do something different in the next moment, which is perfect, you know? And uh, it, it is, it, it's amazing because everywhere you look, you're getting taught, right? You're get you're learning a lesson. And, and so, even if things like that comparison are teaching you in some way, they're teaching you of what needs to be healed that. And most of the time I feel personally that when I'm working with my clients, it deals with the not enoughness like that, that, yep. that absolutely insane idea that we all think that we're just not enough. We're not worthy to be God in human form. And, and we are, I mean, it's, it's here we're, we're it's happening. It's possible. There's nothing more that needs, there's no argument that needs to happen over it. Yep. Well, and, and even when you look uh, on the religious side in in the Christian new Testament, you have Jesus saying, you need to be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect. Yeah. Now I've had a lot of people over the years when I've done spiritual work with them who say like, well, that, that, like, I don't get that because if, if we're talking about God, how can I be perfect as God is perfect? Like, mm. you know, th that's just impossible. So why am I being set up for a failure? But I think if we go back to what I was just mentioning, it, it does say be perfect as your heavenly father is perfect in the sense that God is perfect because God is God and does whatever God does. Yeah. Again, not trying to be anything else, but that's it. That's it. So that's We're, the same thing. We go back to that. You do you to the best of your ability. And here is your perfection within. So in, in that sense, don't try to be God. Don't don't let that ego, you know, go crazy and, and allow yourself yeah. to say, well, I have to do all of this because, you know, you got this, you know, God thing going on because you're not God and then you're not going to be. Yeah. So be I, the best human that you can be, which includes your faults. Well, you know, and, and here you go. Life force energy flows through everything living, right? Right. So the mm -hmm. tree and, and there you go again, that same life force energy flows to us. If we would just tap into it and just allow it, then, I mean, there's nothing else more that we need to do. It's kind of like nope. laziness in its finest, you know, like it's good <laughs> to be lazy. It's okay to be lazy in that that that's where that inspiration will come from for doership. But we try to make it different. You know, we try to make it like, well, I have to do this to have this and to be this, but it's all a simultaneous be, do, have of, you know, yep. the way that you're being will get you the things that you would like. And, but you, anybody who's really tapping into it won't do it for the karma part of it for the, like, it's an honest effort of this is who I am and this is where I'm going. And all of a sudden, wow, well, there's money and there's friendship and there's laughter and there's love and there's joy and there's peace. And there's all these amazing things just because you've chosen to tap into who you really are. Yep. It, 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 exactly. Uh, you know, the goal is in, you know, that necessarily is what you were saying, all of those, uh, you know, like karmic benefits. rewards, yeah, or, yeah. right? The benefits, <laughs> however you want to throw it, but they're going to happen because of what you're doing, you know. And and when people have said, you know, I've tried to find inner peace and I can't do it, I've said that some people will stop trying. Yes, exactly. That's you know, exactly yeah, you know, it's, so it's easy when you live your life, yeah, right? Just yeah. live your life in the way that you and I are talking about now, 
And I'll almost guarantee that eventually you're going to sit back one day and go like, whoa, I've been feeling inner peace for a few days. Yeah, yeah. Like it just kind of snuck up on you. Um, but I think the other thing, you know, when you look at the example of like the tree or sometimes I use the example of a rock, I mean, it doesn't really matter. It functs yeah, as nature. No. Think also that the tree is doing in the sense that it's doing its photosynthesis and it's taking in the water and, you know, it, mm. it's doing some things. Sure. So we also have to do. But at the same time, what's the biggest thing that the tree is doing is trusting. Oh, yeah. Ooh, that's huge. <laughs> you know, the tree's only going to grow if it's in the right soil, if the soil yeah. is taken care of properly, if there's the proper light, rain, whatever it might be. And I'm talking a tree out in the woods, not one that, you know, you planted and you're caring for. And sure. are, you yeah, know. Yeah, yeah. So you got this tree out, out in the middle of the woods and the only thing it can do is trust that it's going to get what it needs. And then it's going to do with what it gets mm. to become the best version of itself. Yeah. So I think that's, you know, when you look at us and when people say, well, look at the circumstance I'm in, or, you know, look at where I grew up or look, mm. Isn't that in a sense where we were planted? You know, yeah. take what you were given and make the best version of yourself from what's there. I mean, trees will grow even if there's a lack of water. There's not going to look like the same tree that grew with a lot of water. But is that any less perfect because it had less water? Oh, man. Chris, yeah. you're on fire today. This is great. I'm trying. <laughs> I want to get too right, philosophical, but I love it. I, I'm, I'm, you know, it's because we're talking philosophy in a sense. But yeah. no, I, I, I think you know, if, if we look at that and just kind of trust, and it's kind of where you you were saying earlier about, um, you know, things happen in their own time. Yeah. You know, so if we can just trust that what we have, we use it to the best of our ability, and here we are, as the fun. best version of ourselves. That's right, and have fun while you're doing it. Don't make it work. Like work doesn't, I mean, in that connotation, everybody has that sense that work is hard, right? Or, or work is challenging or it's not fun. Don't make it, don't make it work. Like make it fun, make it enjoyable, make it, you know, just the next best thing. And you get excited about it. You get excited about life. You don't compare. You just look at what you've got in front of you and you're just grateful. Yeah. Um, because when you look at it, you know, if I'm comparing my neighbor as saying they're better than me, <laughs> everything you just said goes out the window. Yeah. I'm not going to have fun with my life you if I think they're mom. better than me. <laughs> yeah, you're you, know, like, you know, good job, dude. Good job. You know, <laughs> then you're having fun with your life. Yes, that's um, it. Then you're just having fun watching. <laughs> but, you know, when, when people do say things, you know, like, you know, my life isn't fun or fulfilling or whatever. Watch for what then comes next, because when mm -hmm. I'll ask somebody, well, how do you know that? You're like, how do you know your life isn't fun? Right. What's the, the answer going to be? Well, look at them. Look at that. Look at this. Look at the thing I just comparison. read. Look at the, yeah. and we're back in the comparison. You're not going to have fun if you're comparing yourself with others. No, not at all. No, for sure. And, and it's so much fun to have fun. Why? I mean, you know, like I, there, you know what, I have, I have so many uh, lady friends that are coaches and I just adore all of them and I adore their style. I adore who they are, what they came here to do. And I am cheering them on from the side. I mean, I do my own thing, but I'm cheering them mm -hmm. on from the sidelines because I'm like, if I can recognize that in you, I know it's in me. You know, and, and that's like the exact opposite of comparison. That's, I mean, it's, it's the alter ego of being like, wow, that's awesome. Look how amazing you are. And that means I'm amazing too, you know, yep. and, and not from an egoic sense, from a sense of oneness, from a sense of, we all have the capability to just, I mean, you've ever watched an athlete do something that they're just 100% amazing at, and you're just wow, look at them. They're in the zone. They're, they're on time. Mm -hmm. They're every single, every single pass is landed. Every single, everything is, is just working out absolutely perfectly. And then you're like, I, I have that in me, you know? And so when you can recognize it, you can see it in yourself as much as you can see it in other people's. It, it's just, if you're choosing to, you know, cause yep. We're meaning making machines and we have the ability to make it mean something worth our while or not worth our while. Yep. 
th there's nothing wrong in my mind with recognizing the accomplishments and the good of other people. Mm. So yes, if, if your neighbor has a bigger house than you and maybe a nicer looking yard than yours and whatever, instead of making that comparison, yeah, be grateful. Yeah. One, be grateful you have a neighbor in your neighborhood who actually wants to take care of their house at all. Yeah, right. You know, <laughs> that doesn't always happen. <laughs> but yeah, you can praise them and say, hey, that's really great. I'm glad that they have what they have. Yeah. Because I'm glad that I have what I have. Yeah. You know, one of the things that, that I do with my coaching isn't just the life coaching, but business coaching. And a lot of times I'll get people who will come to me and say, I want to open up my own life coaching business. Yeah. Now, I've had colleagues say, like, are you crazy? Well, why are you giving them all of like the info on how to build up their own life coaching business when they'll take your clients? And my answer is, I don't know that they'll take my clients because right. I'm unique in what I do. They're unique in what they do. Yeah. And if one of my clients would do actually better with them, I would rather that because what's my goal anyway? Is just to obtain help clients them. or is it to help yeah. them? So, you know, if, if, if they got somebody that they can work on from my caseload, hey, go for it. Uh, you know, th there's always people who need help. But the well, point you always is, have different gifts, exactly like you said. So, yeah. I mean, you know, uh, you you may work more with a psychological aspect. I might work more with an emotional aspect. And so um, and, and what I call channeling, you know, is for me to help just like let that love flow through me mm -hmm. and and have them hear what they need to hear, you know, and and that might not be something that that you would do, you know, so right. it's always good to help other people get to where they need to be, I feel. And I think that's part of where you find that inner peace, because then we can look at each other and say, those are just our unique gifts. You know, I'm not going to look then at what you're doing in the practice and saying, oh, look at what she's doing. It's so much better than mine. And she's got more clients because she's doing this and I don't do that. Right. But no, I don't do that. You know, and, and just in, in, in a way that, hey, I'm glad you're doing that because I see the need for what you're doing. <clears throat> but that's not my style. That, oh, that's just sure. not my training. That's just not me. You know, but there's, a, you know, a number of clients who want what I, I give and there's a number of clients who want what you give. So that's where and I think if we stop comparing, <laughs> you know, there, there's always something that you're going to find better in somebody else. But why don't we just enjoy that as their uniqueness and your uniqueness? Yeah, for sure. Well, so I have a good idea for a listener. <laughs> Uh, please do. I think that it would be amazing to to reach out to people who are in your same field and not collaborate maybe so much, but to, you know, just say, hey, I see what you're doing. And I just want to tell you, like, I think that you're amazing or whatever it is that you think. I love that. I love the work that you're putting in. I love what you're doing. And I want I want you to know that, you know, uh, you inspire me maybe or something of that nature. So find somebody who's inspiring you in the same mm -hmm. field that you're in or in something that you really want to be really good at. And call them up or email them or write them or reach out to them and, and let them know like, Hey, thanks for what you're doing because you're inspiring me to, to do better myself. I really like that. And not yeah. in that comparing way. You're no, not comparing no. them as better than you, but no, there's somebody so who exactly because they inspire you. And, and so they have something about them that really, you know, speaks to you that, that you may want to emulate or, or just appreciate. Um, but yeah, but we're not comparing it. It's, it's their uniqueness. And then you're finding something in that uniqueness. Well, that and I great. feel, it's awesome. I feel like, uh, the, that will kind of take the fear out of the comparison, you know, because that's really what I feel like part of what comparison is, is it's fear. Right. Mm. And so if we're doing something that's celebrating, then we're we're really taking that same emotional feeling and turning it into something that can be beneficial for you and them. Yep. I, I like that idea of fear. I, I think you're uh, definitely onto something there. I never thought of it mm -hmm. that way, but yeah, yeah. I, I could go with that. Yeah. You, can, uh, you rubbed I like off that. on me a little bit today. <laughs> <laughs> 
the whole universe working in the way it needs to be working. <laughs> Do you have any last minute thoughts or? I, I think this has been awesome. And I just really encourage people to uh, take the tips and, um, you know, take the challenge and, you know, try to grow from that challenge. Absolutely. Yeah. And I want to say that I, I just am grateful. Honestly, I'm grateful for all of our listeners. I'm, I'm grateful for you, Chris. Uh, you guys inspire us. You inspire us to be better, to have greater topics. And um, your feedback is always really very valuable to us. So we want to thank you for that, too. Yep. And please keep it coming. Yeah. All right. Well, thank we'll you, Missy. See you next time. All yep. right. See you next Bye-bye. time. Bye.